Hello everybody out there in the world today. So for today's video, I'm going to be sharing another visionary life-changing experience I had. Um, this is really one of the moments of my life um, in this form, in this current physical form that really impacted me. It was very life-changing, very profound. It was probably the experience of this current incarnation that I am in. Um, and it's, it's very difficult for me to express. There's a lot of some, you know, darkness to it. Um, so I'm going to do the best I can. And I hope that this can help people maybe in some way. I just feel that it's significant. I feel it's something that I've been needing to let out. I've been kind of putting it off, honestly. It's kind of difficult, like I said. But... I don't know, I guess maybe with the the January new moon cycle we're in, I don't know, it just felt right. So let me just get right into it. So in past videos, I've talked a lot about, you know, my earlier visions, my channelings, my connectivity to collective consciousness, oneness. I talk a lot about the divine light, the light within, love. God, Christ, Krishna, Muhammad, Buddha, you know, self-realization, energy, eternal, ethereal, I could go on and on. And this experience is what, it's, it's what really, really brought me to this. What really, it was my initiation, if you will, my complete and total enlightenment to the absolute truth of existence, what I like to call the essence of existence. So, like I said, I was growing up, I was already kind of naturally born very curious or attuned to spiritual ideals or kind of an expanded consciousness, maybe a clairvoyance, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, channeling, seeing spirits, seeing things, hearing voices, you know, all of these little things, um, just being aware of the subtler energies that exist around us. And it was something I was always contemplating, and as I grew older, I was, you know, Especially in my younger years, I was open to this, and I was expressing this, and I was curious, and I wanted to know why and what this meant. And, you know, it was something that I think caused me a lot of friction with society, especially here in the United States. Everyone's so queasy about the mind and things that they don't understand. They kind of have a fear towards it or they just a resistance, like, no, 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 that's, you're crazy, or, oh, you need help you know you're you're unstable you're mentally unwell you're insane you know i don't know there's all kinds of things i mean we've definitely progressed but for me growing up it was definitely very difficult and i felt very isolated and i was struggling and there was a lot of suppression just like you know i was kind of like i grew up with a lot of almost like everyone, all these adults and these authority figures kind of making me feel like something was wrong with me. And for a long time, especially in my youth, I thought I got to a point where I was like, is something wrong with me? Like, am I not normal? And like, what is going on? You know, and had I maybe grown up in, you know, like a society with, you know, more shamanistic practices or maybe even in India and, in, you know, with the Hinduism or something, people might have said, oh, he's channeling divine energies, he's channeling spirits, you know, it could have been something totally different. But here, you know, my story isn't really that um, uncommon among people in the United States who have a different way of seeing or their eyes are more open. Um, as Emily Dickinson put it, 
much madness as divinest sense. You know, we see it as, especially here in the West, our, we, we, we are so reductionist and materialistic in our views that we're kind of, we don't know how to deal with that. It's kind of like a total kind of a, it's just like we, I don't know, we're queasy about it. But anyways, so a lot of that was going on, you know, and I started becoming more secretive with it. Um, and But I still always, deep down, could not stop being aware of these energies and these thoughts and these feelings and these emotions and this deeper sense of connectivity of existence and all and the all is one and one is all and as i grew older i just kept feeling pulled to this in any way and that at a point in my life led me towards experimenting with hallucinogenic plants and the plant entheogens you know um psilocybin mushrooms mescaline peyote um, i experimented with lsd which i don't really like messing around with any of the kind of more synthesized laboratory based things. Um, I really was more interested in the plants and connecting with the plant consciousness and learning and growing through these various powers. And so I was doing that a lot and it was really raising my vibrations and like releasing my Kundalini and all these things were happening. And it was honestly, I pushed it too far. Um, and something I want to point out with this video is that it's all descriptive, not prescriptive. You know, I'm just telling you about my experiences so hopefully you can make the best decisions for yourself. This is all just my own personal experiences. I'm not trying to advise or, you know, say you should do anything. It's, you know, this is just my story. This is what happened to me. And... Yeah, so that's out of the way. So <clears throat> basically, I was doing this and I was experimenting and all these energies were rising and I was having so many unbelievably spiritually awakening. I mean, it was like, it was like, oh, I want to go down the rabbit hole. I want to be the guru. I want to understand, like, I am going to dive into the infinite abyss of existence and I'm going to put a jetpack on. Like I was like, it was like I was racing to the spiritual finish line or something. And so all of this was happening, but the more and more I dove into this and the more I became, quite frankly, obsessed, like infatuated, like with these things and these thoughts and these energies. And the more I tried to express them, the more I was met with resistance. Just misunderstanding. You're crazy. You're, you know, that's weird. Oh, let's change the subject. Like, what? Are you okay? Like, what's going on with you? And it just was so difficult. I just didn't really have as much of a receptive energy as I needed from others. I mean, there were some people who I definitely were connecting with, but I kind of wasn't. It was it was a difficult time in my life. I don't want to get too off track with it, but basically what I'm trying to get at is that I was going through this phase of my life. I was doing all these things. I was having all these suppressed energies. I was going through a lot emotionally, mentally. I was all over the place experimenting with hallucinogenics, and I was like on one end feeling very enlightened and very like, oh my God, like I see, I see the truth. I see the light. I see all of these things and I, I feel this bliss and I feel all these understandings and these realizations. But it was kind of like I was keeping it secret to myself because on the other hand, I was like, oh, is something wrong with me? Am I crazy? Is all this just a bunch of BS? Like, what am I doing? Like, I was just really having this struggle and I was just feeling like very alone in this realization, like kind of like I was like 
like the crazy person on the street corner. Like I was never to a point where I was actually like homeless or on a street corner and I was going, the world's going to end or anything like that. But I meant like, I just felt so alienated and isolated and just alone in this. Like I didn't have anywhere to reach out to at that time. I couldn't, you know, I just didn't. I just felt very alone and very like, I don't know. Like I just didn't belong anywhere. Like, like I was so misunderstood. And I think a lot of that, I think a lot of people today, especially younger people and during their youth in that period, they feel this pressure and they feel this disconnection with society because it's so, it's so impersonal and so bottom line. Ugh, I, that's a whole nother video. I could get into a whole bunch of things, but so it was building up and I, it, there was a depression there. There was a sadness, a deep loneliness, a sadness, just, I don't know what to do. Like I'm sitting here and I'm having these profound realizations and these energies flowing through me and they just seem so significant that they cannot be ignored. But then out from the outside world, I'm having get a job, get a this, do this, do that. And it was like, it just seemed so insignificant in comparison to what was happening within myself in my direct experiences. And I felt really lost. And it reached a pinnacle point where I was just, I was lost. I was completely lost. I was just whatever, you know, like, I guess I'm just fucked up in the head. I guess I'm just this and that. Like, I just felt like I didn't want to be a part of society. Or maybe I did, but I just didn't know how I could fit in. And it was just, there. I was confused. And I just started to lose faith. I started to lose hope. I started to feel lost just like, there's no other way to put it lost it alone and it hit a point where i went out one night and i decided to drink some alcohol and i was drinking and i was at this party and then some girl had some pills it was like xanax and she like drops them on the floor and everyone was grabbing them and they were eating them. it was like a like kind of a drug alcohol fest kind of thing and I grabbed, you know, a Xanax or two, and I took those, and I was really drunk, and I was just feeling so just fed up, just kind of, like, tired, like I, I couldn't go on. And this was very intense. I remember my friends were like, Mark, we're leaving, we're leaving, get in the, you know, the car, it was a truck, like, we're going to take you home. And I just remember being like, okay. And I remember getting in the back of the truck and I was laying there and, you know, everyone was kind of just talking. I was kind of just like almost like falling asleep. But in my mind, I was like, okay, this is it. I was like, when I get home, I'm going to go and I'm going to go get a bottle of pills and I'm going to swallow them and I'm going to end it. I'm going to kill myself. I'm done. I'm just done. I, I can't, I can't go on. I can't do this. That's it. So I got home and it was like, I was on a mission. I was just like, all right, later guys. Kind of like everything's cool. And then as soon as I left, I'm like, okay, got in my car, went to the store, like the 7-Eleven and I bought a big bottle of Tylenol PM and I just went home, just sat there. I didn't even like, I didn't even like think about it. I was just like, okay, I just ate them all, every single last one. And <clears throat> and I just laid down and I was like, okay, like this is it. I'm just going to leave like I'm done. And I was laying there and I, I think I kind of fell asleep. But then I like got up. And I, I was like really confused. Like I didn't know what was going on. I had no idea. And I like walked out of the living room and I saw my mom sitting there and I went, hey mom, can I bum a cigarette? Because I was smoking cigarettes at the time. And I was like looking at her and she was just staring at me like, 
like soulless. Like I was like, what? And I was like, hey mom, can I have a cigarette? And then she like put out her hand and like set down the cigarette. And I like went to grab it and my hand went through it. And then I looked up and my mom wasn't there. And I was like, what's going on? Like I was, I was in a bad place. It was really, really, really terrifying. And I started breathing really heavy and I went back into my room and I couldn't like differentiate reality. Like, cause I had swallowed so many Tylenol PMs and I was just, I was scared, but I didn't know what to go do. And then I saw my cat, Sam, and I was just like, Sam, Sam. And like, I kept calling his name and he would look at me and I was like, okay. I was like, he's real. He's real. Cause I was hallucinating and seeing people and things and weren't there. Like I was really confused. And my mom, all of a sudden I heard a knock on the door and she came in and she said, what's going on? What's going on? And I said, what do you mean? And then I told her, I was like, I swallowed a bunch of pills. So she took me to the hospital. She's like, you're going to the hospital right now. And I didn't want to go. And she took me. And then like, even when we got there, I wanted to just, I tried to run out of the hospital. They like tackled me down. And they were like, you know, we need to basically pump your stomach, all that stuff or whatever it was. They had me drink like the charcoal. And I, I had to like puke and puke and puke. And later on, I talked to my mom. I found out that the reason she was so concerned is because she said I was like trying to like brew coffee in the sink in the bathroom and I was just doing all these things and she was like something's not right like her you know she just knew something wasn't right with me and I don't remember any of this like but essentially this is going somewhere <laughs> I know it's kind of intense and a little deep and this is this is hard for me but so I went through that and I was in the hospital and they ended up like basically detoxing my liver and my kidneys and everything. And they told me, you know, they asked me like, Oh, why did you do this? And I, I just said, Oh, I just had poor judgment. I, I just took too many time off PM. I thought they'd help me sleep. I just lied about the whole thing, you know, cause I was like freaked out. But they told me, they're like, if your mother wouldn't have brought you in, you would have died like your toxicity level was so high like that's it you would have that would have been it and it was it really shook me up and I was kind of like man this is really intense you know but at the same time I was still just kind of like I just don't care like I just want to get out of here and so that was it. I left the hospital like after a few days or whatever. And I was kind of just like, okay, you know, and I just want to say before I go on into the next significant part of this is that just as someone who decided to do that and did it and was essentially successful, just don't, just do not, it was, it wasn't right, I don't condone it, it was the darkest, one of the lowest moments of my life, it was, it was the lowest moment of my life, I mean, I went into the darkest, lowest point, and it's just not, it's just not right, it's just so wrong. I mean, just, you have to reach out to somebody if you, you know, whatever it is, just, I think part of it is that I'm trying to express the hope and the faith and the redemption that is possible because I have gone to such low points in my life. I mean, such dark places, you know, and there's other stories just like mine, you know, people who seemed like that was it, but then they turned it all around and I am a living embodiment of this. 
I have, in my own way, turned around and found so much peace and happiness in life. You know, and I think this is a big part of this is that this is kind of a like a cautionary tale to not give in to such extremes and not have to learn lessons the hard way like I did. Or really, I kind of just got like unbelievably lucky or I am blessed in some way or I don't know. But there just is an answer. There is a solution there is a way. And that's going to kind of get more into the second part of this all. And it is that... So this happened, and it was what it was. But I got out of the hospital, and I wasn't really kind of like, Okay, like I'm gonna change my life. I'm, you know, this is it. Like, yeah, I was kind of just like, I don't even know what I was feeling. I was just so like, oh, uh, just kind of numb from the experience. I went to my friend's house, and I sat down. And I just, I just kind of lied about the whole thing. I was like, yeah, I just got a little too messed up and I took too many pills, I guess, and I got sick. Or I was just like, they just pumped my stomach, and I was just having a beer with him. I was just like, kind of like whatever, and then. I don't know how else to explain it, but I feel like the next thing that happened to me had to happen. And it is the thing that shook me so to my core that I've only just now, some 15 plus years later, been able to revisit it and awaken to the lessons of this experience. And and share with you this love and this light and this energy and this goodness. So right after this happened, I got invited to a party, you know, another party, same drug and alcohol fest kind of thing, just kind of right back in it, you know, and kind of still just kind of playing around. Like my ego was so all over the place. Like I'm, I'm spiritual, I do this, I take psychedelic plants, or I smoke weed, and like, I was just kind of, I don't know, I was all over the place, once again, you know, I'm, I used to always say, I'm going down the rabbit hole, and I'm putting on a jet pack, you know, all of that nonsense, and so I got there, and then my friend at the time, he had dimethyltryptamine, um, extracted, concentrated, synthesized crystals, of DMT. For those of you who don't know, it is a, a hallucinogenic compound found in many plants. Um, ayahuasca, if you've ever heard of that in those ceremonies, is dimethyltryptamine. Um, the pineal gland, the third eye in the brain, releases dimethyltryptamine when you're, I think, in higher concentrations when you're born and when you die, as well as during dream states and that sort of thing. It's been nicknamed the spirit molecule. And essentially, you can extract it, synthesize it down, and freebase it. And have essentially the strongest hallucinogenic experience possible, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Um, and I, you know, throughout my years, I had read a lot about Terrence McKenna. Um, the Lord of Psychedelics, and I was really experimenting with a lot of that. And what he had said about dimethyltryptamine was always take the third hit. He said, because you're going to start hallucinating so much that you might not even be able to, like, hold the pipe. And he's like, but even if you have to have someone hold it up, take the third hit. And he was like, then you'll truly blast off. So here I am, right after this whole experience with the hospital and the pills and the suicide attempt and all that, and I'm just here. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. So I took the first hit, and I mean, I puffed. I like <sighs> took the biggest hit I could and held it in for like, like a like a, held it in. You know, like for those of you who smoke and experiment with that stuff, you understand what I mean. But I was really holding in so that it absorbed in my lungs, and that substance hit me, and I did that twice and then the third time I was just like uh and I did it a third time and I just remember sitting down 
And all of a sudden, it happened. I just... Like completely was leaving my body, completely astral projecting, completely ethereal network, matrix, cosmos. I was in the web. I was the journey. I was in it all. I had no, there was no left, there was no right, there was no forward, there was no back. There was just, like it was, there was infinite eyeballs and colors and fractals and things you read about like in ancient Hindu texts and the Bhagavad Gita, like when Krishna reveals his true form to Arjuna, just like infinite eyes, infinite arms, infinite, infinite, infinite. I mean, this realm of just patterns and designs and things. And it was just, at this point, I was no longer a body, and no longer eyes, but I could still see no longer... <laughs> It was a complete, the complete astral realm is probably the best way to go about it. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Alex Gray, I was basically entered into an Alex Gray painting. I mean, that's it's pretty much the best way to put it. <clears throat> if not, you should check out some of his work. That might give you more of a sense. That's Alex Gray, artist, I don't know, psychedelic. I mean, but so this was happening. And I was, you know, entering into this ethereal astral realm, this infinite space of eternal everythingness. And then suddenly I heard, ha ha, ha ha, ha like, like, like this. And I was like, I, I was going on. It was like behind me, or it was around me, like it was in me. Then all of a sudden, it was in front of me, and it was this playful, mischievous, almost goblin-like creature. And reflecting back on it now, I know that it was the ethereal energies reflected and refracted through my filtered-down material, physical form. You know. It was just like the higher dimensions. It was like I was seeing the spirits of play, of mischief, because I was at a party and I, the eyes and the energy flows and all these things. And it ended up right in front of me. And it was very playful and very mischievous and very like, hee hee hee. And it went like this and it reached out like into me, like all of this, like. It's really difficult because I'm trying to describe it to you, but it, it went beyond the laws and rules of this dimension that we perceive because of, you know, the reducing valve in the brain and all of that and our limited capacity and what on and But so for the sake of just the experience, it reached out and went, Poop! and it, it was that exact noise. It was funny. It was like, Poop! and it popped my brain or my soul or my energy and then put its hand down like this and like put its hand down and then from that hand like a like an ethereal form of me appeared and then that one which was standing there now because this being like came into me and did this like it was like me and this being are one and it did this and then this one took its arm and went and then did this, and then that one went pop, and a new body appeared, and then that one went pop, and another body appeared, and they were doing this in a circle, and it was like this, it was like a game. And all of this was happening, and they were essentially playing with me, playing with my spirit, playing with my soul. It was a game, and it was like the game of life, or the... It was the dance or something. I don't know. It was it was strange, and I was kind of just, it was just happening, and I was just like, it was just happening. I don't know how else to put it. But all this was happening, and I'll never forget this. In that moment, I saw 
I saw it all. I saw all the various dimensions of reality unfolding and infolding on themselves. I saw the layers or the realms or the the infinite abyss, the Akashic records, the collective consciousness, the, you know, interdimensionality, however you want to look at it, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth dimension, all of these things. I saw all of it. I saw the all of human knowledge, the everything, the power, the energy, the the sorrow, the good, the bad. I mean, it was it was way beyond even our planet, our civilization, our human existence. I mean, I saw the entirety of human knowledge, the entirety of everything. I had like unlocked in that moment the all is one and the one is all. And it was all there and I was just observing. You know, I wasn't indulging in any way and then all of the sudden, through all of this, through all of this infinite fractality and all these things happening, I saw this little point of clear light, of light. And I remember just noticing it and going, oh. And then I'll never forget the being that was playing with me looked back at me and was like, oh, you see that? And then it, it I'll never forget, it said, and all this was happening telepathically, like communicating, it was on a whole other level, but it said to me, oh, you're one of those people, you can see that? And it said, oh, you're one of those kinds of people who can see that. And that has a deep significance for me in my life because looking back on this now, I've realized that it's something that I've always seen. And that I have to share with others this light. And so I saw the light and it said that to me. It said, oh, you're one of those people who can see that. And it said, yeah, we see that too, but we don't look at it. We like to play our games. And it said, keep playing with us. And I just couldn't, I couldn't stop looking at the light. And I was just kind of like, no. And I just started gravitating towards the light. And at that moment, this being was like, almost kind of like frantically, like kind of like panicky, like, pop, 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 like trying to do whatever it could to like keep me grounded or in its realm. And like, it was like, no, no, don't go. Come on, play, 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 play. Like it was like, come on, like doing everything it could. And I just was like, no. And I went into it and as i moved further and further of it into it more and more and more and more and more layers of my karma my consciousness my existence my ego just were dissolving away were being removed 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 and i hit a point where i felt the the deepest sorrow I have ever felt. I mean, I mean, it was like the saddest, lowest feeling I had ever had. I mean, it was just, it was so, it was just so sad. And I just, my immediate thought was, oh, I did it. I was like, I killed myself. I was like, I am, I was like, I really messed up. Like, I am dead. And like, I am, it was like, I just had this moment of feeling so sad because I thought about my mom and my dad 
and my brother and my sister, you know, my family. I was just like, what did I do? I was like, they're going to be so sad. I was like, I, it was just so, it was so low. But then it kept going. And after that was all removed, after all of that went away, I then became completely and totally engulfed in this light, in this clear light. I literally dissolved. My energetic body just dissolved into into it, into eternal divine bliss. It was, it was, it was more than joy. It was even more than happiness. It was even more than bliss. It was, it was like everlasting peace. It was, it was it. It was, it was so okay. I mean, I think that's really, I, I've said this before to some of my friends who have talked about this with like that. That is the best way to, for me to try to express this is that it was just finally everything was okay. It was just okay. It was like there was no more worry. There was no more fear. There was no more questions. There was no more answers. There was no more left. There was no more right. There was no more. It was just okay. Like truly okay. Like there was just nothing to fear. There was no worries. There was no... I don't want to say it was nothing. It was definitely not nothing. It was just like an absolute okayness. It was the absolute wholeness. It was the absolute oneness and love and light and good. And I felt this and then... That was followed by uh, like almost a moment of perhaps pure blackout, like absolutely nothing, maybe at that point. Like, it, and then all of a sudden, I like came to and I was clinching my shirt like this, and I went <gasps> and I breathed in and I I let go, and I was like, I was still like hallucinating quite a bit, but I was like back in my body, like, and I was like, oh my God, I didn't, I didn't die. I was like, wait, I did die. I was like, I don't know, I'm still alive, I'm here. I was like, I'm here. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And I, I just, I was just like, oh my God. I was like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I was like, I'm here. I was here, I was like, I am. I was just like, I had to like touch myself, like pinch myself, like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I was like, I'm so grateful to be back. I was like, it didn't mess up. No one's going to have to be sad. That was the biggest thing. I just didn't want anyone to be sad. I didn't want to feel like I left unnaturally. And like, so that happened. I went home and I mean, this shook me to my core for months. I mean, months after, like I was in like a, I was on the brink of like psychosis of like breaking down. I was like, Literally for months on end, I just stared off into the distance and my friends, everyone were like, Mark, what is it? And I was just like, I just can't stop thinking about it. And they said, what? I was like, I just can't stop thinking about it. And they're like, what? And I was like, the experience I had, I can't stop thinking about it. And I, I went on like that for months and months and months. And I was just, I, I it was taking me so so much to, to attempt to integrate back into, you know, this this 
current physical form in this this body and oh and it was just it was so powerful and I have recently now sometime later been reflecting upon this more and I've been realizing that in that moment I did die I went back to God to the source to the kingdom of heaven to God you know I believe I saw it as light maybe if I had come from a Christian background maybe I would have saw it Christ or something, or maybe I would have saw Krishna if I was Hindu, but I have really no religious background or leaning towards one or the other. But so I saw this light to this, and I went into it, you know, like it kind of really like the near death experience going towards the light and that whole thing. And when I came back from that, I realized some very significant truths. One, that life is your current form, your current existence is precious, and you are here. This is blessed. This is part of your journey. This is who you are. You have a purpose here. You exist. <laughs> I mean, the awesomeness of existence is awesome and intense and unbelievable and right now that perfect God energy puts you here for a reason you have a purpose you have a duty you have actions to uphold you are blessed you are beautiful life is a gift it is a jewel it is a gem it is just such a wonderful thing and I realized that love and family and peace and all these things are the most important thing of all. That it's not about money or what you have or any of that stuff. Because I know now what's going to happen when you leave. Those things just don't, they're not anything in comparison to what I experienced and what I felt. And that was the other point, was that this light, the source of existence, is a God. I mean, it, and it's so, so everlastingly peaceful that knowing that and knowing that that I had to have gone through that experience. It was as if it was just my destiny. And I took that and I felt that. And now I know it. And it's within me. And it's within all things. It's within you. It's within me. And it is, it was God's way of letting me know, Mark, everything is okay. Like deep down, we do have a purpose. There is meaning to life. There is. You're not alone. You're not. And you are okay. This isn't just some random chaotic series of events with no meaning. And the meaning is a very warm love and bliss, and beauty, and truth, and journey, and, and life. It is self-realization. I went through this experience, and I'm sharing it now with you because this is life. This is reality. Reality is this love, and I mean true Divine, divine love. I mean, it's just, 
it overcomes all boundaries. It has nothing to do with any of these other things. It has nothing to do with like good or bad or west or east or this or that. It's like it's this all pervading energy that's here right now, existing in all, through all, with all, is all. And it's here now for all and everything and anything. It's just so beautiful. And ultimately, I encourage you to feel this energy, to feel this within yourself in whatever terminology, words, feelings, emotions you can muster up. If it's anything to get you to understand and know this, because you already do know this. It's so simply embedded in with existence. I mean, we are so, I mean, God is me, you are God, God is us, God is all, one is all, all is one. It's just so us. It just is us that it's just there. And really, I just encourage you to spend the time focusing on that more, embodying that more. Because that's the real, I mean, it's the real deal. It's the real happiness. And all you have to do is just feel that feeling and focus on that feeling and embody that feeling, connect through the neuron, the neural pathways in your brain and allow that feeling to manifest and energize and vibrate out more and more. And you'll start to see all these other things dissolve away. You won't worry about money. You won't worry about having this car or or fighting it's just like it literally i mean it's just all these little things that we say like love conquers all like but it's a real love it's divine love it's it's it and it exists right here now it's god communion and it's within you without you around you, here, and that's, so to sum it up, you know, that's, that's the message of this video and this experience, um, that everything is okay, truly, like, there's no, there's no argument, there's no way around it, like, you don't have to worry, I don't have to worry, like, Live your best life, breathe, know that you are loved and that all is loved. We're not alone. Okay. Take care. Bye.